Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga with Haini. I'm Haini and this week I'm going to lead you through a yoga practice for sensitive knees. So we are going to avoid poses that put too much pressure on the knees and I'm going to also show you some tips how to strengthen muscles around the knees. So let's get started. For this week's practice I recommend having some props nearby. The most important prop would be a yoga block. I have a block here. You could also use a book or just some kind of a box that you could use as a yoga block. And then another prop, this is more optional, would be some kind of a strap or a belt. Or you could use a scarf or a towel, just something you can put around the foot when we, in the end, open the backs of the legs a bit more. So either just a block or block and a strap. That's all we need today. And we're going to start our practice from lying down. So when you are ready, just come lie down on your back and take a moment to find a comfortable lying down pose. You could extend your legs for a moment if you want, or just leave the knees bent, maybe lean the knees against each other as we take a few breaths to begin our practice. Either have your arms resting next to your sides, or you could bring one hand on the rib cage, the other hand down on the belly. And take a few slow breaths here in and out. Sending your breath down towards the ribs and also down towards the belly. Just finding that calm pace in your breath before we start to move. And remember, as we go through the movements, as we go through the practice today, be very mindful of your knees, especially if you know that you already have very sensitive knees or if you have any injuries around the knees, then be extra mindful. And you can move slowly so you have time to kind of check in every now and then how the knees feel. And if anything is too much for your knees today, then don't do it, so don't push and make sure there's no pain in the knees as we go through the practice today. Now we're going to do our first movements lying down. So with your next few breaths, bend your knees, bring your feet, your legs about hip width apart and bring arms down next to your sides. Check that you have a bit of room over your head as we're going to do a bridge flow to begin with, moving the arms as well. So first, have your feet about hip width apart in a place where you feel that you can press the feet down, starting to strengthen the legs. Inhale, and as you exhale, press your feet down to the mat, lift your pelvis, Lift your back off the mat and keep inner thighs engaged so you don't let your knees drop out to the sides. Inhale and exhale. Release the back, release the pelvis back down. We'll do the same one more time. First, exhale, press the feet down. Feel that your the balls of the feet the heels, toes, ground down. Inhale at the top of your bridge. And exhale, release the back, release the pelvis down. If needed, you can adjust where the feet are. Now we're going to add arms. First, exhale like we did before. Press the feet down, lift the pelvis, lift the back off the mat. As you inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling and continue extending them over the head. They can come all the way down to the floor. 
with your next inhalation reach the arms back up towards the ceiling and then exhale release the arms the back the pelvis all the way down again you might adjust where you are or the mat or where the feet are would you same two more times exhale press the feet down lift the pelvis the back off the floor and as you inhale, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lengthen the arms, neck to the head, over the head, all the way down to the floor. Inhale, reach the arms back up towards the ceiling. And exhale, release everything back down. The back, the pelvis come down as well. One more time. Exhale, press the feet down, inner thighs engaged, find your bridge. And as you inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, lengthen the arms next to the head. As you inhale, reach the arms back up to the ceiling. And exhale again, release everything back down. And take a slightly deeper breath in and out. And then bring your knees to the chest, to the belly. You can hug the knees in. And from here, we're going to go into some twists, active twists. First, roll on to your left side. And now bring your knees, your hips on top of each other. You could bring your left arm here under the head. We're going to open the right shoulder, right arm first. As you inhale, open your chest up towards the ceiling. Open your right arm like a cactus shape. Exhale, close the chest. Come back onto the left side. Same again. Inhale, open the chest up to the ceiling. Keep the knees, keep the hips more or less on top of each other. And exhale and close the chest. So we're trying to avoid twisting in the knees here. One more time. Inhale, open the chest. And stay here, couple of breaths. If you have the left arm under the head, you could remove that arm, open the whole chest towards the ceiling. And then exhale, close the chest again, come back onto the left side. And then roll on to your back. So come back to the center. And we'll do the same to the other side. So now, we're going to come lie down on the right side again, maybe right arm under the head to begin with. And again, knees, hips stacked on top of each other. We're going to open the left side. Inhale, open the chest, open the left shoulder, left arm. And then exhale, close the chest. Come back on to the right side. Same again. Inhale, open the chest. Like a cactus arm, that left arm that opens. You can keep the knees on top of each other. Exhale, close the chest. One more time. Inhale, open the chest. Up towards the ceiling. We we'll stay here now a few breaths. You could release the right hand, the right arm from under the head. Breathe towards the chest. And then exhale again. Close the chest, come back onto your right side. And then press the left hand on the mat and bring yourself up into a seat. And this could be any easy seat. I'm suggesting some kind of cross-legged seat if that feels okay in the knees but you probably know that you have your preferred seat if needed you could bring some support 
under the knees here. So if you have your blocks, your books, you could place them under the knees and that sometimes helps. So there's no rotation in the knees. And we're going to do our cat cows or you have an option for rolling cat cows in a seat. We're going to first inhale, open the chest like the cow pose and then exhale round the spine and here you could lean the back towards the back of the mat to lean the head forwards you're rounding your neck same again inhale open the chest you could even look up exhale round your spine the cat pose so lean towards the back lean your head forward once more inhale open the chest and exhale round your spine open the space between the shoulder blades inhale open the chest and now either continue those cat cows or move into rolling cat cows where you would now exhale lean to the right and start to circle the chest lean towards the back lean towards the left so you start to circle your chest your upper back rolling cat cows so you have an option now continue with the basic cat cows or circle the chest a few times one way keep breathing in and out and then after those few rounds change the direction so now rolling circling the chest and the back the other way so as long as we're bringing movement to the spine so this is a really nice way to do cat cows without putting the weight on the knees let's do one more circle or one more cat cow forward and back and then bring your spine to the center take a breath in and out and from this seat we're going to move into downward facing dog so if you have blocks there just put the blocks aside for now and briefly through hands and knees without staying there we're going to lift into downward dog so now bring weight onto hands and feet and lift your pelvis up and here you can move a bit walking from one foot to the other walking from one hand to the other opening the backs of the legs it's a bit of counter pose for those bridges that we did the bridges were strengthening the backside now downward dog opening the backside of the legs and release the head down you could shake the head a bit take another breath or two in and out in this downward dog knees could be bent so feel free to choose the shape for your knees they could be straight or they could be bent here the next thing we're going to do is walk the hands and feet closer together so you could either walk hands to feet or feet to hands or maybe move both ends so you could walk your feet and hands towards the center of the mat so that we arrive into a full forward bend shift the weight onto your feet and then hands on the shins inhale to flat back come halfway up engaging the back side of the body and then exhale round your spine so now opening the back side of the body knees could be a bit bent here next inhalation start to roll the back up so we're coming all the way up to standing pose lift the chest up open the chest and you could roll the shoulders a bit good next we're going to do some standing poses and this is where the block is going to be a very useful prop so now reach for your block or your book or box whatever you has as your yoga prop today and we're going to do 
a few poses with the block between the legs. And the reason for this is that the block helps to really fire up the inner thighs and all that core support, strengthening muscles around the knees. There could be many reasons for sensitive knees, but if it is weakness in the muscles around the knees, then it's really important to strengthen those muscles. And using this block will now help us really fire up the muscles around the knees more. So that's why I suggest you now bringing that block between the legs so you can kind of gently squeeze the block. And this is already starting to strengthen the support around the knees. The first pose we're going to do is a chair pose. I'll turn sideways so you can maybe see better. So now feet about hip width apart. We're going to either lengthen arms in front or bring palms together in front of the chest. Check you have the weight on both feet. Inhale, press the feet down, squeeze the block, and then exhale, start to bend the knees just slightly. So you're sending the pelvis back and we come into a mini chair. So especially if you have sensitivity at the fronts of the knees, make sure that when you do your chair pose, you're not pushing the knees forward, but rather focus on pushing the pelvis back. You still have weight on the balls of the feet as well, but I would say that there's more weight on your heels. So you're more focused on pressing the heels down and sending the weight back rather than pushing the knees forward because that extra load on the front of the knee might hurt if you have sensitive knees. Now you can either keep the palms together in front of the chest or you could reach the arms over the head or in front of you that will load your back and your core a bit more if you want to focus on strengthening the upper body too. Take another breath or two here, still squeezing the block between the legs so the inner thighs stay active. And then slowly bring the palms in front of the chest and exhale, press the feet down, lift yourself up back into that Tadasana mountain pose. You can release the arms down and just take a few breaths here. Feel still that firing, that activation in your inner thighs as you have that block between the legs. So we keep the legs active. And you can stay where you are. I'm just gonna turn towards you so you can see the next movement better. We're going to come into side bending half moon and we're going to very surprisingly keep the block between the legs. So we keep the legs active. Now, first side, bring your left arm behind the back. And as you inhale, reach the right arm up next to the head. Inhale, lift up through the back and exhale, lean to your left into a side bend. Pelvis could slightly lean to the right. But now really focus on keeping the legs active. So feet pressing down, you're squeezing the block between the legs. And imagine that line from your inner thighs lifting to your pelvic floor, lifting all the way to your lower belly, to your spine. So it's one long supported line from your feet through the inner thighs into your core. Take another breath in and out. And then inhale, lift back up and exhale, release the right arm down. Let's change arms the other way around. So now right arm behind the back. Inhale, lengthen the left arm up. And as you exhale, lift yourself towards your right into a side bend on the right side. And breathing here again. Feet pressing down, squeezing the block between the legs and pelvis might lean slightly to your left. 
breathe a bit more to the ribs head can lean into the side bend as well take another breath in and out and then slowly with the next in breath come back up to center and release both arms you can roll the shoulders we're going to do one more pose with the block between the legs so you can stay where you are I'm going to turn sideways again so you can see better. We're going to come into another full forward bend with the block between the legs. And first, take a full breath in. Bring hands to your hips. As you exhale, start to tilt forward from the hips, slightly bending the knees and actively squeezing the block between the legs. So we're really trying to keep the legs active and using the block between the legs can also protect your hamstrings if you have any hamstring injuries. Now you can either stay here halfway, fold it forward or exhale, continue into a full forward bend, rounding your spine. You can bring fingertips or hands down, but keep using the block, gently squeezing the block between the legs as you fold forward. So we're keeping the legs active and like I said if you have injuries around the hamstring this could protect the hamstrings as well in your forward bend. Allow your hip to release down if you are in that full forward bend. If you're in a flat back keep your back active. Take another breath in and out. And then if you are in a flat back Bring your hands down, come into that full forward bend. You can bend your knees more. Now we're going to take the block aside. So take the block somewhere next to your mat, bend the knees more and then walk into downward facing dog. So walk your hands and feet apart and you could move your legs a bit here. Step from one foot to the other and take a few breaths in downward dog. See if you can feel the legs a bit more in this downward dog and you feel the legs are more active after using that block take another breath in and out and from this downward dog shift the weight forward into plank pose you can adjust the hands you can adjust the feet keep lifting your knees and your thighs away from the floor Keep pressing your hands to the floor. Take a few breaths in and out, strengthening the upper body a bit more as well. And then from your plank, exhale slowly. Bring yourself all the way down onto the belly. You can release the toes. Take a couple of breaths lying down on the belly. We're going to do some cobras and some strengthening for the backs of the legs here. So first, we're going to either leave the hands under the shoulders or you could also step the hands just a bit wider apart so that your hands are not under shoulders but a bit further out to the sides. And now keep your legs active First, we're going to press the tops of the feet down and the fronts of the hips down. You don't have to press the knees down if that feels too sensitive for the knees. First, as you inhale, elevate your chest slightly off the mat. Not pushing too much with the arm, but really just strengthening the back muscles. And exhale, lower down. Very gently draw your navel in. Next inhalation again. Lift your chest off the mat. And exhale, lower down. We'll do one more round. With your inhalation, open the chest away from the mat. And now we're going to stay here a few breaths. Either keep your hands on the mat or elevate your hands slightly off the mat. So you're using your back muscles even more. 
Keep drawing in through the lower belly. Try to keep your feet down, the tops of the feet on the floor. One more breath. And then exhale, release back down. And now you can bring your hands under the head and lean your head all the way down. Take a slightly deeper breath in and out. And we're going to continue to lifting the legs, one leg at a time, strengthening the backs of the legs, the buttocks a bit. Again, building support around the knees. So now we're going to go for the right leg first. Just slightly press the front of the right pelvis down to the mat and reach the right foot away from the head and then inhale, elevate the right leg slightly off the mat, engaging the buttock, engaging the hamstring. Next exhalation, slowly, slowly release the leg back down. Same on the other side. Start by pushing very gently the left side of the pelvis to the mat. So you're activating your buttock first and then reach the left left leg long and then lift the left leg off the mat. Inhale. And exhale, release down. We'll repeat this on both sides. Press the right side of the pelvis down. Inhale, reach right leg long and lift the right leg just slightly off the floor, off the mat. Feel the back side engaging. Exhale, release the right leg down. Left side, press the left hip down and then elevate the left leg slightly off the floor, reaching it long. Inhale and exhale, lower back down. One last time, as you start, press the right side of the pelvis down, reach the right leg long, and inhale, elevate the right leg off the floor, and exhale, lower back down. Last time, press the left side of the pelvis down, and reach the left leg long, inhale, elevate the left leg off the floor, try to keep the leg straight. And exhale, release down. Good, and just rock the pelvis a bit from side to side. And then from lying down on the belly, we are going to roll down onto the back. And at this point, if you have the strap, your belt or maybe a towel somewhere nearby, bring it next to you, somewhere where it's easy to reach for it when we're lying down here on the belly. Not on the belly, on the back. (laughs) Now we're on the back. And first, we're going to do one more bridge. So one more time, like we did in the beginning, press your both feet down and exhale. Elevate the pelvis off the mat. Now try to feel the inner thighs without the block. Try to feel the inner thighs gently squeezing in towards the center line. Feel the backs of the legs working, buttocks gently working, hamstrings gently working, inner thighs balancing the action of the buttocks and the hamstrings. And feel the both feet pressing down. Knees are supported. And then exhale, lower yourself back down. And just swing the knees a bit from side to side. Good. And we're going to do one more opening for the backs of the legs and one more twist. And for this, we can now use the strap. And you could have a block there as well, just in case you want to use it. So if you're planning to use a block for the twist, then bring the block now to the right side of your body. And we're going to hug left knee in towards the chest. And you have an option, either keep the right knee bent or straighten the right leg. 
If you have a strap, now bring the strap around the left foot. If you don't have a strap, that's very fine. What we're going to do is we're going to lift the left foot up towards the ceiling. And if you have a strap, you can support the leg with the strap. If you don't have a strap, just reach hands behind the left leg so you can support the left leg up. And it's a bit stronger stretch for the back of the left leg if we straighten the right leg down to the floor. So you can try both options. And if it feels too strong with the right leg straight, then keep the right leg bent. But after all that strengthening on the back side, now we are again opening through the back side. So take a few breaths in and out. With each exhalation, allow the back of the left leg to release. You might even very gently pull the leg a bit closer to the chest but not forcing it. The knee could be bent, especially if you feel that there's too much pulling on the back of the knee joint, then bend the knee. So we're never trying to stretch the joint. We're always trying to go to the belly of the muscle. So kind of the center of the muscle, not stretching the joints. So if you feel there's too much pulling, there's a stretch, there's a pain, at the back of the knee, then bend the knee. Just one more breath in and out here. And then as you exhale, release that left leg, bend the knee. You can just put the strap aside. And if you had the right leg bent, now straighten the right leg. And then we're going to exhale twist by bringing the left leg out to the right side of the mat and now you could use a block under the left knee or thigh or you might bring the left leg all the way down closer to the floor leave your chest open towards the ceiling if you want you might open the left arm out to the side as well but that is very optional so you could also keep the left arm down. Make sure there's no pain in the knees. So if you feel that you're now twisting in the knees, then try to bring your hips more on top of each other. So turn the pelvis more to the right side of the mat. So you're again stacking the hips and that often helps the knees as well. Take another breath in and out in your twist. And then slowly exhale, come back to center onto your back, bend both knees, hug both knees in towards the chest. If you had a block on your right side, move that block out to the left side of the mat now, if you used it for your twist. And first we're going to open the back side of the right leg, so bring left foot down, either a left knee bent or you might straighten the left leg. If you're using a strap, bring the strap around your right foot and then lift your right leg up towards the ceiling. And if you're not using a strap, you could very well hold the back of the right leg, support the right leg that way. But opening, gently stretching the back of the right leg now, again, being very mindful around the knee joint. So if you feel you're just stretching the back of the knee, soften the knee more. Try to get the stretch more to the back of the thigh or maybe the calf. And remember, you have the option here to try straightening the left leg. It might make the pose more intense. So if that's the case, then rather keep the left knee bent and breathe. With each exhalation, try to release tension on the back side of that right leg just a bit more. And keep shoulders, keep neck soft, although we are using the arms to support the leg. So focus on your breaths. Slow, calm breaths in and out. 
You can always adjust the pose if you start to feel there's pain in the knees. Take one more breath in and out. And then exhale, bend the right knee more. You can put the strap aside, straighten the left leg. And next exhalation, bring your right leg to the left side of the mat into that twist. And again, I already notice I'm automatically stacking my hips to keep the right knee a bit happier. So feel free to kind of wiggle the pelvis a bit so that you bring your hips on top of each other. The right arm could open out to the right side or you could keep the right arm next to your side. So we also want the shoulders to stay happy. It's a big twist. Make sure there's no pain in the back. And take a few more breaths in and out in your twist. This could be a stretch for the outside of that right thigh, hip as well. And tension there could cause pulling in the knees as well. So if you feel it as a big stretch in that right leg, maybe there's some tension to be released. And then slowly exhale, release that twist. Come back to center and release both feet onto the mat. You could rock the knees, the pelvis a bit from side to side. And then we're going to take a moment in a resting pose. Just a few breaths. Checking in how the body feels now. So either leave your knees bent or extend both legs like in the beginning. And take a few slower, maybe deeper breaths in and out. Notice how the legs, notice how especially your knees feel now. If there's pain, maybe we went too far in this practice for the knees, then you know next time you need to be a bit more gentle for the knees, maybe bend the knees more in some poses. Or maybe in the chair pose, bend the knees less. So it's, it's a learning process when we have sensitivity, when we have pains and aches in the body, we do need to adjust the practice and maybe learn new ways to practice. So keep your mind open. Always be flexible with your practice and respectful with your body. Now, if you want, you can stay in your resting pose. You could take a longer Shavasana pose. Or if it's time for you to close the practice, slowly roll on to one side. And then from your side, bring yourself up into a seat. Again, any easy seat where you feel the knees are happy. Breathe in and out. And if it's part of your practice, you could bring your palms together in front of the chest. And as always, at the end of the practice, thank yourself. Most importantly, thank yourself for bringing yourself onto the mat into your practice today. And I thank you very much for joining in, for sharing the practice. Namaste. Thank you. Good. I hope your knees feel fine after this practice. If you enjoyed the practice, please give the video a thumbs up and leave your comments below. I would really like to hear how your knees feel or if you have questions about adjusting the practice for knees in other ways, let me know. 
And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. There will be loads more yoga related videos coming up. Thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!